In order to reforge the sword, Senua undergoes four trials themed after parts of her past. Each will make her mentally stronger. The completion of this task will represent mastery of the mind. The first of these takes place inside an old burial mound and called the Trial of the Labyrinth. Mazes and labyrinths are not new to literature and have been used to represent either psychological or spiritual journeys for those who enter them. While the cave that Senua enters is described as a labyrinth, this is only partially true. In everyday conversation, mazes and labyrinths are used interchangeably. There is a significant difference though, both in terms of their physical structure and symbolic meaning. The primary characteristic of a maze is that they are multicursal, meaning they have multiple branching pathways. These are intended to confuse those trying to find their way through. Many of the Egyptian pyramids were constructed as mazes in order to help protect the pharaoh's body. Another characteristic is a maze has multiple entrances and exits. The goal is to go in and avoid becoming lost while traversing to the other side. This description tells us that mazes can be used to test intelligence, protect something, or keep something hidden. Labyrinths, however, are unicursal. They only have a single path to follow, so it is impossible to get lost. With only a single opening that acts as both the entrance and the exit, the goal is to reach the center and leave back down the same path. It symbolized many things depending on the culture. Sometimes it was the journey to our spiritual center for illumination before returning back to the world with new wisdom. Some used it to trap evil spirits in the center, while others saw the single path as the road through life which winded closer and away from the goal, ultimately reaching it if one treks on. This can be seen on Senua's path as the first turn allows her to see Dillian through the iron bars. So close to the goal, but it is only by going in the opposite direction and working through does she finally reach that goal. For the purposes of this video, I will use both maze and labyrinth when it is thematically relevant, as I'm sure you see the problem in the description I just gave. The cave that Senua enters has characteristics of both a maze and a labyrinth. While it only has one entrance and contains something in the center, it does have branching pathways that make it difficult for her to navigate. Almost as though her mind wants to make it as difficult as possible to reach what awaits in the center. With the cave system residing within a large burial mound or barrow, it appears there is something she wishes to remain buried. This dynamic is famously told in the story of King Minos and the Minotaur. Before getting into that, however, I want to take a moment to discuss the origin of the word labyrinth. From the root labyrinth, it means a double-headed axe. In its full form, it translates to the palace of the double-headed axe. Why is this relevant? The axe symbol can be seen all throughout the palace of Gnosis on artifacts as well as carved into the stone. Gnosis, located on the island of Crete, became the cultural center of the Minoan civilization. Seeing as this name was taken from the mythic King Minos, it is likely that the Palace of Gnosis is the palace of the double-headed axe in which the word labyrinth originated. Minos had angered Poseidon for failing to sacrifice a white bull. As punishment, the god made Minos' wife fall in love with it. This resulted in the birth of the Minotaur. After this creature became too much to contain, Daedalus was instructed to design a maze and place the Minotaur inside. Unable to contain the power of the beast, King Minos buried it inside a structure which was placed under the Palace of Gnosis. To me, this appears to be a clear representation of hiding something that can't be controlled in the unconscious and out of sight. So what kind of beast does Senua have locked away? Before reaching the center, she will first have to navigate the twisting passages. Right outside the entrance is a torch waiting for her. As Senua takes the fire and enters, the Furies comment, Take the torch, you'll have to be able to see. The darkness of our mind can be difficult to traverse without assistance. Taking the wrong path can lead to dead ends or the road curving back on itself, causing her to arrive in the same room she had just left. Even as we try to find a new path for ourselves, our thinking can lead to the same patterns, 
keeping us lost inside the maze of our mind. Sometimes it is easier to give up and leave the psychological maze of our thoughts and learn nothing. Along the path, many wrong turns lead to a break in the stone where light shines in. This gives her the option to leave the maze if she chooses, to abandon the journey to the center of the labyrinth where enlightenment awaits. The point of no return involves one of these options to leave on one side and a small hole to crawl through on the other. Not only is she required to go literally into an unknown path, but bent over, sacrificing the comfort of free motion to progress. This reminds me of an ancient Egyptian meditation where one dives down into a dark tunnel filled with water. Upon seeing the light, most would exit in order to come up for air. Waiting inside was a crocodile that would consume them. Success could only be achieved if one ignored the light leading to perceived safety and continued deeper to true victory. Each successful step she takes has a brazier that she can light. This gives her a roadmap through the maze of thoughts and memory. It also shows that as one becomes more familiar with one's mind, the easier it becomes to navigate. We must know where we have been before learning where we are going. This parallels the clue that Theseus received from Ariadne before entering to confront the Minotaur. The etymology of the word clue means a ball of yarn or thread. By unraveling it as he traveled through the maze, he had a perfect path to find his way back out. Although done in a different form, the torch serves the same purpose. The braziers are lit so Senua knows where she has been and creating a path to follow out. In the chamber where she sees Dillian, this path is laid out by a mural on the floor. The image of a tree and its roots show the path leading to her goal. In light of recent events, it is appropriate that hanging from the tree branches is an inverted sword that marks the center. But what lies in the center of the labyrinth? What does she try to keep contained within this dark place? Just outside the center, there is a hall with red light pouring through the opening. The growling from inside is reminiscent of the Minotaur waiting for victims. Just past it, Senua meets her mother, and the face gives mention to the abuse she and Senua had to suffer at the hands of Zimbel. Based upon what we learn of their relationship, it can be argued he is the source of her greatest fears, his voice being one that led to self-doubt and fear. Upon entering the center of the labyrinth, she is confronted with a memory of him. After meeting Dillian, she finally found a way out of the darkness that Zimbel forced her into. His response was to dig his claws in deeper, even striking her on the spot. In her mind, he became the avatar of her darkness. The voice after falling off the bridge was his, attempting to drive her to surrender, and continues to show up throughout the story. We all keep vaults in our mind to keep these types of thoughts locked securely away. In this manner, we attempt to avoid dwelling on negative thoughts. Senua did the same, locking him inside this maze-like structure and buried inside a hill with the dead. However, when we bury things, they still affect us. The more we ignore it, the more it controls us. Only by confronting these dark truths can we truly deal with it. Druth tells Senua as much during the trial of Sirt. Hell will not give you the answers you want, but you mustn't look away from the horrors it does offer because you cannot overcome suffering if you refuse to look at it. By traveling into the center and confronting the Shade of Zimbel, not only does she bring the helplessness and fear he made her feel to the forefront, but she remembers that even in the memory, she had the courage to stand up against him, to not let it control her. In that moment, her inner sun burned bright. As with all labyrinths, we travel to the center to discover something, and after walking back out, we will have been changed. Senua reminded herself of the inner strength she displayed that day, and now she will carry that strength to the remaining three trials.